Kneading and Getting, written by Midnight Dancer. Applejack's solid buck was rewarded with a generous shower of apples, falling into precisely placed buckets around a tree. The farm pony allowed a small smile to grace her features, glancing down at the near overflowing harvest. Green eyes swept the orchard, afire with the orange glow of sunset, and she felt a warm contentment settle into her breast. Content. Something about that word niggled at her, tugging at her even as she tried to follow the calm stream of her happiness down. Hooves thudding on the ground decisively, she shook her mane as she approached the next tree. Silly things, I reckon. As Applejack coiled her legs for the next buck, eyeing on the tree's bark, she froze. There, in the bark of the tree, was a shallow carving of a heart, with a crude chisel of AJ and RB adorning the trunk. Applejack hesitated for the briefest moment, eyes wide as this sudden metaphorical buck hit her heart instead of a tree. Furrowing her brow, Applejack let out a primal growl as she recoiled her legs, bucking solidly against the carved declaration of love. The bark shattered, leaving only with the living wood underneath, as a shower of apples thudded mutely into the baskets beside her. Applejack barely noticed, she kept her back turned, trotting resolutely away, leaving only the shattered remains behind. Heading back to the barn, Applejack failed to notice that her taciturn brother was watching her the entire time. He knew very well about the tree, knew its significance, and just watched her leave, sighing and kicking the remains with the hoof. Big Mac soon turned to follow her with a new determination. Big Mac caught up with his little sister in the barn as she was rearranging the tools for the 16th time this month. Moving his ever-present hay stalk from side to side, Big Mac mews at the best way to... address the problem. Watching her move the same wrench to six different places in her distraction, Big Mac heaved a sigh, rolling his eyes. Applejack whirled at him, eyeing him, and Big Mac could see that even though the barn was dim and dusty, he knew Applejack was a little upset, and she couldn't say anything. Applejack? Mick? You need some tools? Applejack turned back to them, kicking them gently with a forehoof. I've been arranging these darn things to keep them organized, but um, it's a bit of an uphill battle. A strong red hoof landed on her shoulder, with a gentleness few knew the red giant possessed. Applejack glanced back again, oil on her face scarcely hiding her emotion. Uh, you need something, Mac? Big Mac smiled down on her, his eyes remaining stern. The question is, what do you need? At her arched brow and furled lips, Big Mac held up a hoof. You ain't been the same since Miss Rarity moved to Canterlot to sell her fro-fro fashion stuff. I know you miss her, but this is a bit much. Applejack stomped on the ground, and she glared back. What am I supposed to do, Mac? I can't sit here and wait for her to change her mind and come back. That's gotta be about the dumbest thing ever. Her voice lowered as she turned back to her tools, softening as she thought of the white pony that dominated her dreams. I love her, Mac. I truly do. But that don't do any pony a lick of good if she doesn't love me back. But all this anger ain't healthy, AJ. She does love you. She just has, a uh, different aspirations and dreams than most country folk. And she's successful with her own fancy clothing thing she does. I have thought you'd be happy for her, living her dream out like many folks don't get to do nowadays. Applejack's shoulders sagged, and a forehoof came up to rub her forehead gently. I know, I know. I should be... Well, I need to be happy for her. She sends letter and she says she's doing well up there. But that's different from being beside her and helping her. All I can do is just sit and wonder what she's doing. Who she's with, how her day's been, how her life is going, and just... She pulled herself up straight again, turning her back to her brother. Deep green eyes finally spilling out their tears. Doesn't help, Mac. You just imagine how she's living up there? I wanted to be part of it, but I can't. AJ, Big Mac murmured, taking her into his embrace finally. I ain't so good at this stuff, but I want you to know that I'm your big brother, and I'm always gonna be here for you, alright? I know this isn't easy, and it's downright painful, but... He pulled back, tilting up his little sister's chin to meet her watery eyes with his own calm ones. Do you really think she would want you to put your life on hold for her? If she loves you, she wants you to be happy. And if she don't, then she don't really care. And that's even more of a reason to make yourself happy, don't you think? But Mac, I... I still need her. Applejack hung her head shamefully, burrowing herself back into her brother's embrace. 
I'm so ashamed of that. After mom and pa. But I'm hung up over some stupid mayor, but I, I just can't help it. For all the good it does me. The workhorse stroked her hair, looking off into the distance as his sister's sobs slowly abated against his coat, content just to hold her and wait for the worst of the storm to pass. When they abated down to sniffles, he caught her eyes once again. Applejack, y'all need to get washed up. Supper's in a few. And Granny ain't gonna be happy to know you were out here bawling over that mare again. Big Mac stroked her head one last time, before disentangling himself from her limbs, turning back to the barn door with purpose. Come on now, you need some rest before you make any hasty decisions. Applejack shook herself off. She soon set all four hooves solidly on the ground, sniffling once. You're right, Mac. I'll be in. Just, uh, just give me a moment. Course. The normally taciturn stallion trotted off to the barn door. Applejack followed, taking a detour to their water pump, letting the freezing water splash over her face and hooves. The heat from her face dissipated. She turned resolutely to follow his steps. The setting sun splashed the porch and front entrance of the homestead in gorgeous oranges and reds. And Applejack couldn't help but smile at the lovely sight. Home. And family. This is where I belong. With renewed vigor, she climbed up the porch stairs. There, she saw Granny Smith in her usual rocking chair. Evening, Granny. Hello, child. Granny Smith inclined her head slightly, a small smile playing at her weathered lips, before dipping her head back down to that photo album she was holding. Saw you working awful hard out there in them fields today. Sure there ain't nothing on your mind? Applejack licked her lips nervously. She regarded her grandmother's cool and knowing eyes nervously. Applejack knew she couldn't lie. Just, uh, just some silly things, Granny. Nothing too important. Rocking back in her chair, the elderly mare eyed on her granddaughter sharply. That so? Seems to me you've been pinning over a certain white unicorn, if memory serves. She turned a page in the album, glancing back down as she waited for the response. This was a dance, Applejack realized, and she had four left hooves when it came to it. Cursed element of honesty. Sighing, Applejack nodded. Yeah, I suppose. Time heals all wounds, though, as you say, Granny. I'm sure I'll forget in time. Smiling faintly, Applejack peered at the album her grandmother held, a photo of a red-coated mare with a shock of blonde curls. Granny's hoof stroked it. Child, time can indeed heal most wounds. Crushes, setbacks in the farm. Those accursed Flimfam brothers that brought the doohicking thing to town that time. Those wounds heal with time. And I know that as well as I know that the fancy princess is going to raise a son tomorrow. Bless her heart. But Jackie... She ran her hoof over the photo of the mare again. There ain't a damn thing stupider that you can do than try to forget a special mare when you love her. That's just setting yourself up for failure, because it's impossible. Scuffing a hoof against the porch, Applejack met her grandmother's eyes once more. How can you be sure? A soft smile broke across Granny Smith's face, tinged with sorrow. I know, Jackie. It's been 60 years, and I haven't forgot, nor have I stopped loving her. Silence reigns across the porch, as the sun finished slipping below the horizon. The first twinkle of stars start becoming visible. As the moon began to rise slowly, Applejack turned her face outward, facing the breeze, and making out with the distant spires of Canterlot in the last flashes of the setting sun. You can take your supper in your room tonight. I reckon you got a letter to write. Granny's eyes twinkled at her granddaughter knowingly, who nodded back, a bit of pink flushing on her cheeks. I guess I'll do that. Thanks, Granny. For everything you do. The orange mare nuzzled the green one gently, and Granny waved her off. Go on now, time's a limited thing. You wouldn't want to waste it on me. Yes, ma'am. Applejack trotted to the house, piling up her plate quickly and disappearing to her room. Nosing her door open, she mosaic to her writing desk, settling down with a bit of parchment and a quill. Dearest Rarity. Under Luna's moon, the matron of the family glanced back down at the book one more time. My apple pie. Wait for me, will you? It won't be long now. With a concerted effort, she shoveled her way back into the homestead, clicking the door behind her, with the finality of a job well done. The End Hello, Ori Pony, Snoggerts here. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, be sure to leave a like. Oh yeah, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more readings like this one every Saturday. Alright, well, that's it for me. Have a nice day. This is Snoggerts, signing out.